Allora, adesso passiamo all'ultimo intervento, oh, switch in inglese per introdurvi Shyam Ramkumar. Last but not least, a man of many talents, now PhD student, but also member of the Tondo family. So Shyam will uh, introduce us to the importance of using a design thinking approach within the companies in order to develop a more impactful and revolutionary circular solutions. So, so Shyam, I will leave the floor to you. Thanks, Alberto. You know the time in 25 minutes, I will keep you on time and then we'll leave some floor for the questions, okay? Perfect. Um, let me just uh, share the screen here. <clears throat> Can you all see the screen now? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, indeed, I, uh, um, I'll, I'll share with you all <clears throat> uh, a little bit about design thinking for the circular economy. Very exciting to have you all participate in this uh, hackathon uh, for the next um, uh, day or so. And looking forward to seeing all the, the solutions everyone comes up with for the different uh, challenges. Um, and, and really, I want to start off the presentation by by saying that you know design is a really essential step uh, for for the circular economy. A lot of times, when we think about circular economy, we focus on the recycling, the end of life of um, a lot of uh, products, et cetera, um, <clears throat> waste streams. But uh, the way in which products and systems are designed is actually very critical uh, in terms of how uh, we can set our systems up for for a more circular economy. And also to accelerate our uh, society and our, our value chains, et cetera, to be more circular. Um, so, so design is an instrumental uh, step. So, so what is then design thinking? Design thinking is basically an approach uh, to take this more holistic perspective and really try to identify what are the key problems, the key issues uh, that that we are facing in order to develop more revolutionary uh, solutions. And the idea is really to focus on the stakeholders that are most impactful. Uh, impacted um, understanding their needs and identify the root uh, of the problems that create a linear mindset. And, and the main focus of it also is to create solutions in an iterative manner. So you're constantly kind of uh, understanding how your solutions are addressing the problem and tweaking them in order to make sure that they're more, more effective. Um, and the approach is used in, in a lot of fields. You've probably heard of, for example, in software development, there's the agile methodology uh, where they develop solutions in sprints. So they basically create an initial uh, version of a solution, they build it, they test it, try to learn from uh, what went wrong, and then they have multiple iterations where they try to improve on that solution. Um, and in, in the startup world as well, there's the, the lean startup uh, methodology as well, um, which focuses on kind of learning about a problem, generating ideas, building a solution and a product, measuring how well and effective that, that solution is, and then kind of relearning and, and reiterating uh, on that. So the approach is basically uh, aimed to continuously gather feedback and adjust solutions based on the, the insights gathered. So how does that translate to the circular economy and, and circular design thinking? So in, in a similar way um, to design products and systems in a more circular way, we also need to keep in mind this idea of constant iteration and continuous learning in order to understand um, how to improve on our on our solution. So, you know, what happens after the first use of, of our solution? What happens after the second, the third? Um, so there's always opportunities to identify more ways to create value from, from what we develop. Um, and there's the sort of circular design guide. It's been it's something that's developed by um, IDO and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And uh, the resource has a really nice series of, of steps to kind of go through the circular design thinking process. And it consists of sort of four steps that you see on this, this image. Um, understand the problem, define specific aspects to focus on, make a very targeted solution, um, release that solution and learn from it, and then repeat uh, that process. So I'll go through the, the kind of four phases and different kind of methods within circular design thinking. That might be helpful for for you all as you develop solutions during the during the hackathon. Um, so, so first is really the the step is to understand the problem. So, um, really trying to identify you know what are the flows of materials, 
Um, are any of them circular already? Uh, if you're looking at products, for example, how do you break it down to understand what the product is made out of? What are the components? Um, <clears throat> and also to kind of look to nature. We had a great uh, presentation earlier about, you know, how um, nature can be a source of inspiration for for new solutions that that haven't been explored. Um, so really kind of taking these these different perspectives and, and I'll go through each of them in, in more detail. So in terms of understanding circular flows, it's it's really to look at, you know, in the current situation, what is happening? How do we going from um, materials to, to products and, and throwing them away? And what are opportunities to close those loops? So many of you all are probably familiar <clears throat> with this uh, butterfly diagram from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. So it's really trying to ident identify what are the possibilities for the specific problem or context or area that you're focusing on and identifying what are those loops that um, that either exist already or or could exist um, and see what is what is sort of feasible. Um, <clears throat> the next one insides out is really more of a, a sort of product breakdown. So if you're looking at a specific product, it's really trying to understand, you know, what are the components of that product? What are the materials used? Um, is it easy to disassemble and take apart? Uh, what are alternative uses for the product or its components? Um, can the product be easily repaired or maintained or recycled? And what are opportunities to improve all that? So it's really trying to better understand a specific um, uh, product that you're trying to improve from a circular perspective. Um, and the last exercise is really to learn from nature. So um, <clears throat> there's classic examples of, for example, Velcro uh, being created uh, as a result of looking at um, uh, burrs from, from nature or <clears throat> uh, high speed trains shaped in the form of bird bills to be more uh, bird beaks to be more um, aerodynamic. So really looking to see, you know, what um, is a specific problem that you're facing and, and how has nature solved that issue? Um, and is there a sort of similar function in nature that can be sort of borrowed uh, through, for example, biomimicry? So, you know, that step is really just to kind of understand the problem and all the different possibilities. And the next step is to really define the problem and to find a concrete sort of circular opportunity to develop further. So there's a lot of different ideas out there. So how can you focus on one specific one? Um, and there's some different exercises in the in the design guide that um, that help you do that. Um, so the, the first is really to kind of um, look at uh, what are some specific questions that you can ask uh, in order to see what is more appropriate for the, the issue that you're that you're focusing on. So um, asking yourself things like, uh, can, a, can a product become a service? Um, can a product be made more modular? Um, is there any opportunities for maintenance? Um, <clears throat> is there any opportunity to work with the manufacturer directly in any way? <clears throat> or uh, looking more broadly at inputs and outputs, you know, what are possibilities to use um, waste or recycled materials? Uh, can the production be more localized? Can you minimize the waste in some way? So just kind of asking different questions to see which circular opportunities are, are more appropriate to focus on for your specific uh, challenge. Um, and then the next step is really kind of define define the the scope of that of that challenge. So um, what are the drivers and barriers and next steps that need to be taken? So um, would a sort of innovation improve the customer experience in any way? Um, <clears throat> what uh, kind of resources or infrastructure is required from a systemic perspective that doesn't correctly exist in order for, for um, this problem to be addressed? Um, what is the kind of business strategy and financial needs? Uh, what kind of collaborations or partnerships do you need? Um, and then kind of how, how, what are the next steps to get the, the process started? So just some questions to kind of narrow down the possibilities into something that's tangible to, to work on. And then lastly, uh, another kind of exercise that might be helpful is looking at a, a sort of circular business model. And even though a lot of people focus on this later on in the process, I think it's important to do it early um, in order to understand, you know, is this idea or is a solution actually feasible? So, you know, going through the exercise of identifying the key activities, the value proposition, the revenues and costs, the resources, et cetera, can really be helpful before you even get started on developing your solutions in more detail to understand whether it's something that um, is actually marketable, that's something that's actually viable and, and of interest. Um, 
So, so once you kind of do all that, you've kind of understood the scope of possibilities, uh, define the specific opportunity. Uh, the next step is sort of make uh, some prototypes and, and test it out. And perhaps you you might not um, have so much time during the hackathon to to do this kind of step, but um, if there's an interesting idea to to work on further, uh, this might be a helpful helpful exercise. And it's really focused on kind of with the prototypes, doing some uh, user centered research, uh, prototyping, and, and getting feedback, um, and really incorporating that continuous learning aspect that I that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so um, this is also helpful for kind of scoping the, the solution it's really to focus on you know understanding who are the users that would benefit from this product um what are their needs and how is this solution addressing those needs um it might be helpful also to kind of do interviews or gain insight somehow into those those needs by directly talking to people and understanding how these circular solutions that you're developing actually can um, meet those needs and solve those challenges um another way to kind of um as you determine different aspects of your solution is to also kind of look at um, uh, the impact versus the, the feasibility. So, you know, of all the different ideas or, or maybe um, opportunities or alternatives that you're considering, uh, which ones have a high impact and, and are easy to achieve. So you focus on things that uh, um, are actually possible in a, in a short time frame. Um, and then the kind of make phase is also really focused on rapid prototyping. So, um, instead of creating a solution and investing a lot of resources early on, it's good to start in a very lean way. Uh, so think about a very rough sketch or very rough concept diagram of your solution and really seeing, um, if that can be tested with users, if that can be, um, tested with, with people who, um, will be the key stakeholders of the solution. And, and really understand, you know, um, how you can get feedback on that early on. And, and it's really about creating mock-ups and storyboards, et cetera, and, and testing it um, at a very crude level before you invest too much time and resources to develop the solution further. Um, and in that process to also make sure you embed feedback mechanisms. So what are the things you want to learn from this prototype? I mean, is this, is this uh, something that uh, people will pay for? Is it something that people will shift to as an alternative to what they're using already, et cetera. So kind of creating questions that you want to ask um, as you kind of uh, test these prototypes and collecting data uh, to make sure that those those questions are being answered uh, in the way that you want in order to see how the, the design can be improved or the solution can be can be improved. Um, and then sort of once the, the prototype has been tested and of course, you can't make everything completely final, but at some level, you have to kind of release the the idea into the world. Um, it's to really creating a it's really focused on creating a plan for for launching and releasing um, uh, the solution or the idea, uh, and that involves kind of uh, launching to learn, imagining new partnerships, and making sure that continuous learning uh, is present. Um, so really making sure that you know when you're when you're launching the solution, uh, who are the people responsible for running? Uh, the solution, what are the resources that you need? Uh, what are the risks that could uh, occur and how are you going to manage them? Um, defining kind of measures of success success. Um, so is it, you know, we want to reduce this per this much of waste. Do we want to um, save this much money, uh, reduce this many emissions? You know, what are those those KPIs uh, for your solution? And how are you going to kind of get the data to uh, to answer that? Um, and then another important aspect is partnerships. So if you want to release a solution and scale it up, who are the organizations or individuals or investors or entities that can help you raise awareness of your solution or your idea and ensure more widespread um, adoption and also kind of identifying what's in it for them. So why would they want to be your partner? How do they benefit? Um, kind of understanding that can also help your solutions uh, grow uh, and scale faster. Um, and then lastly, like I said, this whole kind of design thinking process is all about continuous learning. Uh, so it's really to understand, you know, are you getting the right kinds of information from your solution? Is your solution addressing the problem in the way that you want it? Um, is it uh, actually scalable? Is it actually feasible? Is it financially sustainable? And answering all those questions um, continuously in order to understand, you know, what should be tweaked? What should be modified? 
and perhaps what do we need to go back to in, in terms of previous steps in order to rethink some of the assumptions or some of the, the choices that were made in the development of this uh, the solution. So that's the kind of uh, iterative approach that uh, that's kind of baked into this whole, whole process. Um, so yeah, in, in kind of conclusion, uh, you know, design is is an essential part of this uh, transition to a more circular economy, and it really requires more radical and disruptive shifts in, in thinking. Uh, and in order to do that, you need to take a more holistic uh, design thinking perspective to look at all the different kind of challenges, needs, stakeholders, users involved. Um, how do you appropriately design and develop products and services uh, to address the linear economy and, and make it more circular? Um, and how do you kind of engage in continuous learning uh, in order to make sure that those, those solutions are constantly modified, iterated on, and revised in order to actually address the, the problems that you, that you set out to solve? Um, <clears throat> though the, 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 the kind of methods and tools that I shared are just a selection of a more extensive group of, of tools. Um, the website where you can find those is uh, www.circulardesignguide.com. It's, it's on the slide. Um, so in, during the, the process of the hackathon, if you want to kind of use some of these exercises to help you uh, design and develop some of the solutions for your challenges, um, it's, a, it's a great resource uh, for your teams to, to use. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to, to answer them. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shayam. Uh, just a quick question, so also to link back somehow to our first speakers at the beginning. Who needs to learn this uh, uh, design thinking approach? Uh, it's only for the designer of a company. Who needs to learn? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, no, this this kind of uh, approach is not something only for designers of products. It's uh, definitely something for any individual at any level of the organization, and and most importantly, the key decision makers, um, <clears throat> ones who are kind of in the um, heads of kind of uh, cities or government agencies or executives of companies, um, because even though they're not necessarily designing the product, they still need to understand. Um, from a, a sort of systematic view, uh, what is the kind of value that our organization is bringing? How is it addressing linear challenges? How are we becoming circular? Um, and how can we make sure that, that our company constantly is transforming in order to address those challenges? So it's not necessarily restricted to kind of the design of a specific product or a specific service, but more holistically, like, are we innovating as an organization? Uh, or as an entity, and are we making sure that we're constantly addressing the challenges that we have a mission or a sort of vision to, to solve? Okay, thank you very much, Shion. That was my point, and I wanted you to stress that. <laughs> so, uh, let me conclude to by thanking all the participants and the speaker of this last mini sessions of the day, and then. Um, let me let me say that also that uh, tomorrow